Sewage in the Thames is worldwide news this morning after athletes went sick in the famous sporting fixture, the boat race. After the annual clash between Oxford and Cambridge, the Oxford crew said it had suffered from ingesting E. coli. Water firms in the UK are pumping more faeces and sanitary products into rivers this year than last, as I heard from the riverbank. And here they come now. It's the famous quote from history. I can't see who's ahead. It's either Oxford or Cambridge. But I'm at a very early point in the race. And the river behind, because of the flotilla, is churning up spray and wake. And people are advised not to let that into their mouths. The river is so polluted, it's dangerous to get the water in your mouth. Which is why I'm drinking beer. And they came in, not as the favourites, in this race, but against the odds, they have done it. And now Matt Edge will collapse, and they will get some help to him. But they will celebrate in that boat a victory which they might have believed they would have had, but a few people said it would have been a dark blue victory in this men's boat race. But it goes to Cambridge again. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, here I am. Uh, the cover band is singing in this pub and let's talk about the water companies they're blaming the rain for the fact that they're putting sewage into the river I asked people outside what they made of that can I ask you do you know about the river quality well I know that based off of because there was a lot of build up to this about not letting the rowers into the water because of E. coli being in the tents. We read that. Yeah, we read that today. My brother lives in Copenhagen and I was there a week ago and they just don't like the water is so much clearer. People go paddle, uh, go in their rowboats along the canals and you can see right to the bottom of the of the water in it. Why don't the why don't the Danish want to put sewage in their waters like well, why we would do? You? Yeah, well we that's what <laughs> why we do. Why, why why what are the What's this matter with the Danes? Why don't they put their sewage in the rivers like we do? Well, I think the government have got um, the they've got their priorities right, and you know my brother pays a lot more tax, and they they but they have a much better quality of life, you know. And that's not just in the rivers, you know. It's down to you know the roads, the the quality of life there, you know. Um, maternity care in in the Netherlands, so, all of those things. So sewage in the rivers is a metaphor for modern Britain. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. I used to row for London Rowing Club here and I was at Oxford University. I was captain of Trinity College Boats, so we've come down to support Oxford today. This is my son, William Hammond, who's just started rowing himself, so I brought him down here today to try and give him some inspiration and enthusiasm for the sport. Well, can I ask you both what you think about the quality of our rivers? Well, having rowed down here on the tideway for many years, it's, it's disgraceful, frankly, to see it in such an appalling state. How old are you? I'm uh, 14. You're 14. What do you think about a water company blaming the rain for putting sewage in the river? What do you think about that at the age of 14? That's shocking. I mean, they're, they're avoiding it in other places around the world. I mean, they, it shouldn't I mean, be happening. Obviously, it doesn't rain in other places around the world. It never rains. It's only here that it rains. Exactly. It's shocking. It shouldn't be happening. Right, so now I'm going to go out on the Thames with Joe Harris, who's a volunteer coach here at Thames Rowing Club. This section of the Thames is known as the Tideway, and is it right there's a medical condition which now contains the word Tideway? I wouldn't call it a medical condition. Um, it's if you get a funny tummy after rowing, we call it a Tideway tummy. And has that been normalised? I guess. I mean, it's not new. Um, people have been getting stomach problems from you know contamination with the river for many years this year the tests that have been done have shown e coli levels 10 times what would be considered uh, poor bathing quality by the environment agency so how bad do you think that news is it doesn't surprise me um, I think we've had this for a number of years um, the testing has got better so there's more efforts being made to test the water quality and try and force people to do something about it. And does it make you angry or upset? Um, I, I kind of come to deal with it. It's like it's just it's part of rowing on the tideway. That there is, you know, the water is not perfect. Joe has turned the motor off and we are bobbing together on the Thames. The river itself, the colour of it, is dark brown and I brought with me a beer cup 
uh, which was used earlier by me to have beer. And I'm going to fill up the uh, cup with water here. So the water that I'm getting here looks like something that would come out of your sink when you'd done a whole lot of washing up. Do you agree? Yes. So it has been tested and has been found in certain parts of this reach to be 10 times higher than the water quality that is expected by the Environment Agency of bathing water that is described as poor. So we don't know quite what's in this beer cup, but I do know where it's going back into the river. <laughs> so we're coasting back in now. There's two swans, there's a couple of geese, and I think that might be a moor, or oh, is that a duck down there by where we're I going? I think it's a duck. The duck, yeah we are. I mean, I've learned never to try to identify bird life, but the two swans are acting as uh, sort of landing, uh, b b beach, beach craft landing for us as we're coming in now. Now, do I have to do anything useful? Uh, no. What a relief. Well, Joe, thank you so much. It was absolutely exhilarating. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure. Imogen Grant is a GB rower and ambassador from the Rivers Trust. She's also a qualified doctor. I'm a Cambridge gal through and through. I grew up there, studied there, and I'm so pleased that the Light Blues took the wins in two races that they were not tipped as the favourites. What is the pollution like for people who are regularly on the rivers around the UK? It's pretty much the worst it's ever been. No river in the UK is classed as overall in good health and just 15% have good ecological health. Those numbers are frankly shocking. Everyone I know loves to walk along a river. We love to feed the ducks. We like to go kayaking, paddle boarding, going for a jog along the Thames. And it's really sad that the river that we're doing it alongside is in really poor shape. What has happened? Do we know why it's happened? Over the last 10 years, the health of our rivers has just gotten worse and worse. And a large part of that has been the self-monitoring with the water companies. There's not been enough funding for the environmental agency to hold these companies to account. And we're really seeing the consequences now of 10 years of mismanagement. As the news helicopter circled overhead, Leonard Jenkins of the Oxford men's team told BBC Sport he'd been vomiting before the race. We've had a few guys go down pretty badly with the E. coli strain. So, I mean, this morning I was throwing up and I really wasn't sure that there was going to be a chance for me to be in the boat. But, um, but yeah, it would have been ideal not to have uh, so much such poo in the water. But, you know, that's not to take away from Cambridge. They were a talented crew. I don't, I don't know if we would have had a chance to get them, even if we'd all been on form. Um, so it's no way to make excuses. Well, it didn't sound like that. It sounded very sporting, but also concerning the sickness suffered by Leonard Jenkins of the Oxford men's team. Speaking to BBC Sport, we heard him at the end of that report. Thames Water declined our invitation for an interview, but said in a statement, taking action to improve the health of rivers is a key focus for us, and we want to lead the way with our transparent approach to data. And then they blamed the rain. Dr. Bharat Pankania is a consultant in communicable disease and a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter. Doctor, welcome back to BH. Good morning. What do you make of it as a public health professional to hear that we're the country that puts sanitary products and faeces into the River Thames? It's extremely disappointing and we are a G7 nation. We can do better and we had started to do better. Uh, I trained in South Wales and I remember our uh, river Taff and it was highly polluted and contaminated and we cleaned it up. So of course we can clean it up. It's just that we need that initiative to clean it up. We should, we must. What about health what's the tip if i get this stuff uh, on my skin if i've got a blister in my eyes or in my mouth well once you have been exposed you will not necessarily get ill but if i if i were exposed this is what i would do i would clean that area as soon as possible with clean fresh water as a minimum the best thing is if you have got blisters and things, don't enter that water. Cover up those blisters and don't get that spray into your mouth. And should I put a dog in the River Thames? Uh, I would be reluctant to, but no, I wouldn't. Because, you know, take the Hammersmith Bridge area, for example. It had a high coliform count uh, making units there. In other words, it's highly contaminated. So if you're not going to go in there, why should you put your dog in there? Yes, just in terms of we only get an hour a week, I could say that you say this, the Thames is not fit for dogs. 
I think so. I think so. Especially in parts where it is highly contaminated. I wouldn't do that. It's quite striking, isn't it? I spoke to a 14-year-old boy with his dad and the dad told me it was cleaner when he was rowing as a young man 30 years ago. Um, where is this on the list of public concerns? There's a lot, lot to worry about. There's mental health issues. There's uh, people living alone. There's cancer that we've been talking about uh, in public figures. So where would you place this on a list of concerns for our country? Actually, it is much higher than we give it relevance because it is an indicator of the ecosystem. It is telling us that that river is unhealthy. And then it tells us also that the life in that river is not thriving. And essentially, we've got a dead river. So that's very important. And also, remember, if you use that water to irrigate crops, you will get food poisoning outbreaks. Because if you irrigate crops with such as salad crops, they can never be washed properly. So you will get outbreaks if you are using water from such a contaminated river. OK, we're going to let you go. It's been very clear, your warning. Can I ask you, um, off topic, are you going to have a very good family day today? Indeed, yes. We will have our traditional Easter egg hunt in my garden. Thank you. Lovely. Well, we wish you the very best with that. We want to keep everything in perspective. Thank you for joining us again, Dr. Barrett Pankania, consultant in communicable disease and a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter. I should say, if you're someone who seeks good news, that there is a super sewer being built alongside the Thames and the situation, once that opens, can be said to improve. So you could keep that in your mind rather than think that we're dripping doom into your ear constantly.